Welcome back, Doctor. What can I do for you? Do you need any help? <coughs> Can't be good for business to see the bartender cough in your beer. Indeed. It would be a shame to taint the delicate taste. Oh, thank you, Dr. Reed. My customers and I, we all thank you. Goodbye, Mr. Watts. Times like these and good drinks just as likely to cause a
Good evening, Dr. Reed. A great night, what? I may have a look at your goods, Mr. Russell. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Do you need medical help? You would save my... Don't worry. There is nothing serious to fear. I have seen far worse, I can assure you. I cannot imagine the pain these people must face, then. You have my gratitude, Doctor. This disease has ruined my appetite. Goodbye, Mr. Russell. I'm sure you'll take care of yourself. Good evening, Miss Price. You know you... Do you need my medical attention? Oh, yes, I feel so... I'm just doing my job. Perhaps. But I have always been grateful for your concern, you know. Goodbye for now, Miss Price. I hope you can stay a little longer this time.
Do you need... I'm afraid I... You'll quickly feel better after taking this. Thank you, Dr. Reed. I really appreciate it. Goodbye, Detective Inspector Albright. Goodbye, Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'm sure we'll talk again soon. Again, Dr. Reed. Do you need my medical attention, sir? Indeed. I've never been good at explaining my feelings, but I can tell when my body is hurting me. You have nothing to be worried about. You should recover by taking this. Sounds so easy to fight disease. Too bad it's not the same making people smile again. Good evening, Mr. Baker. Hmm. Why do I always have feelings of deja vu when I talk to you? Do you need my medical attention, sir? I'm afraid I do. I knew we should have left London. I don't want to appear tactless. But you're risking your health by remaining outside at this hour of night. Says the doctor who also works outside at night. But as always, the imprudent person enjoys the company of their fellows. Goodbye, Mr. Baker.
So Prewin never left Doris's theater after they invaded. They must be holding Edgar here in their new headquarters.
Doris Fletcher was about to become a disaster. I'm getting close to having all the evidence. Blood of a pure heart, garlic, blood of a king. I don't understand. Perhaps this is what McCullum drank. I had better keep that in mind. It's locked, all right. Edgar, can you hear me? Jonathan, is it really you? Easy. Easy. Save your strength. I'm getting you out of here. Don't try to spare me. As a physician, I know all too well when it's too late. Punctured lung, broken ribs, internal bleeding. An accurate diagnosis, wouldn't you say? Edgar, what happened? They wanted me to confess. Beat me black and blue. Geoffrey McCollum ambushed me at the Pembroke Hospital. He was convinced you and I were responsible for the Skull epidemic. I never imagined that self-righteous fanatic would... dare to attack us in the open. What b became of him? To prove him wrong, I let him go. Really? Are you sure that was the wisest course of action? Time will tell. The most intriguing part of his accusation was that you and I were the pawns of some ancient vampire. William Marshall. Yes, they... Uh, they tortured me to make me confess the same nonsense. Edgar, as much as I would like to believe you, 
I have a few concerns that require clarification. What do you mean? William Marshall, for example. You speak of him as if you know him. How is that? Jonathan, I, I cannot say I'm ready for another round of questions. Why would the guard of Prewen believe you and I created the vampire epidemic? Maybe due to our profession? Because I offered you shelter in my hospital. What can you tell me about William Marshall? Not much. History paints the story he was the greatest knight who ever lived. Amongst the immortals, he had a yet greater legend. Why is the guard of Prewen so obsessed with him? He was the only ancient vampire to escape the first great hunt launched by the guard of Prewen in 1854. They believe he's an evil creature plotting his return. Why would he deserve such a reputation? I cannot say. The Brotherhood of St. Paul Stoll has next to no intelligence on him. All I know is that he's supposed to be the oldest of all the British vampires. While investigating the epidemic, I read some of McCullum's findings. I think you have some explaining to do. I have nothing to hide, Jonathan. Nothing at all. Do you know Doris Fletcher's real name? No, I'm afraid not. Her real name was Doris Jones. She was the daughter of Harriet Jones. What do you want me to say, Jonathan? Do you remember when we suspected Sean Hampton of killing Harriet Jones? Yes. The terrible episode that came as a shock to us all. Harriet Jones faked her own death. When I found her in the sewers, she confessed she wanted everybody to pay for what happened to her. That woman was extremely bitter, full of hatred and festering anger. Doris Fletcher visited her mother at the Pembroke Hospital. That's how she first got infected. I know nothing about that. Miss Fletcher once came to visit the sick. That is all I know. No, Edgar, there is more. Doris Fletcher was Harriet Jones's daughter. They exhibited the same symptoms. Blind hate and strong physical mutation. What does this sad story have to do with us? Do you know where we are? Doris Fletcher's theater. This is where that hateful creature plotted to spread the epidemic across London. I only briefly met Miss Fletcher once when she visited the Pembroke Hospital. You say it was to see her mother. She seemed like such a sweet and graceful woman. My point exactly. The disease turned her into a bitter soul, driven by vengeance just like her mother, a symptom of all the infected patients. Certain diseases are known to produce similar effects. Rabies, for example. And rabies is not the devil at work. Come on, Edgar. Don't you see the pattern here? The epidemic? The link between Doris and Harriet? The suspicion of McCullum? How could I? I never saw Harriet Jones again after she fled the hospital. Doris and Harriet shared more than a hidden family bond. They were the embodiment of the epidemic and are linked to the Pembroke Hospital. Come on, Edgar, this is no coincidence. I swear I'm at a complete loss. All I did was administer vampire blood to cure old Harriet. There was no evil plan, no diabolical plot. You did what? I tested the regenerating and healing properties of vampire blood on Harriet Jones. My only intention was to find the cure for influenza, I swear. Whose blood did you use? William Marshall's? Mine? 
Lady Ashbridge. While transfusing her with human blood, humanely appeasing her hunger, I also kept samples of her blood for my research. You used her blood on Harriet Jones? My God, Edgar, that's unethical. You betrayed two of your patients at the same time. How dare you judge me? Must I name the alarming list of your victims? We are both deceivers. But at least I know I'm a monster. You have worked beside me. You saw what I'm doing at Pembroke Hospital. Jonathan, you know I'm not an evil soul. Just another victim of this tragedy. No, Edgar, you are not going to die. Unless you want to. What, what, what do you mean? I can save you, Edgar. I can turn your broken body into one like mine. You truly would? After all I've done, after all that's been said, you would offer me this gift? I have no way of knowing which punishment would be worse, Edgar. <laughs> But it is not for me to decide. So? Oh, please, Jonathan, please. I beg you. This is what I've always wanted. This is what I've always searched for. Very well, then. Prepare to die and be reborn. To face an eternity of guilt. I'm ready. Oh, indeed, I am ready. Enough!
So Harriet Jones became the original carrier when Edgar gave her vampire blood. Steady, boys, we've got I must tell Elizabeth. 